Section 31, Tree Maintenance and Removal. Tree Maintenance and Removal. The references for this section are EM 385, TAC 1, TAC 1, Section 31, and various sections of 29 CFR 1910, as indicated on this slide. Hazards associated with tree removal are struck by, electrocutions, falls, and caught in or caught between. Here's an example of a struck by fatality. A 47-year-old groundsman was killed when he was struck by a falling tree section during a tree trimming job. A crew leader was in the elevated bucket of a truck-mounted aerial lift cutting the top of the trunk of an 80-foot high oak tree. When the groundsman walked onto the landing zone, the area under the tree to which branches and debris will fall. He had been told by the crew leader who was in charge of the site to remain on a work break at their pickup truck. The crew leader was unaware that the victim was under his work area. He cut away a tree section, pushed it down, and it fell onto the victim's head. Electrocution fatality. A 25-year-old tree trimmer was electrocuted when he contacted a 7,600 volt overhead power line while clearing a loose branch from a tree. The incident occurred where the company had just finished removing a tree from the backyard. The crew had completed the job and was beginning to clean the site when they noticed a loose branch hanging from a tree. Using a climbing harness, the victim tied onto the ball of a crane line and was raised up to the hanging branch, which he cut down. As he was being lowered to the ground, the victim noticed a second loose branch hanging on another tree. The victim had started to swing towards the branch while on the crane line when he contacted a primary power line and was electrocuted. During the tree felling activity, a branch from an adjacent tree fell and fatally struck the tree cutter after the tree he was cutting fell over an adjacent tree. The accident was witnessed by a co-worker who yelled at the cutter of the falling branch. The victim reacted a bit late and was pinned by the falling branch. Similar incidents have happened in two different NAVFAC locations within a span of six months. Caught in or between. A 33-year-old male tree trimmer died when his body was caught in the chipper gears while chipping small and medium-sized limbs. The victim was working alone at the brush chipper. Co-workers said they heard a strange noise coming from the brush chipper. The supervisor on the job went to investigate, discovered the victim's remains, and immediately called 911. Although the incident was not witnessed, Police concluded that the victim either lost his balance while feeding material into the chipper or was leaning across the feed table, pushing trimmings into the feed chute when his gloves were caught by the feed rollers and he was pulled through the chipper blades. General, employees working in the proximity of electrical equipment or conductors shall consider them to be energized. A qualified tree worker shall make a visual inspection to determine whether an electrical hazard exists before climbing or before performing any work in or on a tree. If electrical lines or equipment cannot be safely avoided, arrangements shall be made with the power company to mitigate the electrical hazard. Mitigation options should include de-energizing, testing, isolating, and grounding the electrical conductors by the power company, as well as all safe OSHA compliant and practical work methods. Equipment. Employees shall be instructed in the safe and proper use of all equipment provided to them. Elevating aerial work platforms. Aerial work platforms shall be provided with fall protection anchors meeting design requirements of the ANSI SIA A92.2 on which to secure an approved system of personal fall protection. For example, full body harness with an energy absorbing lanyard, which shall be worn by the operator or operators when aloft. Tree climbing techniques. Use of rope access techniques 
should only be used where other means of accessing the tree or undertaking the work, such as aerial devices or pole saws, are not practical. See Section 24 for recommended rope climbing equipment, techniques, and safety practices. Where climbing is required, tree crews shall have a secondary climber who could assist in a rescue if necessary, or the crew shall be working in proximity to nearby crews with a climber who could assist in a rescue. A climber shall have available a climbing line and at least one other means of being secured on their person at all times. For example, a climbing line and a work positioning lanyard. The climbing line shall be passed around the trunk of the tree as high above the ground as possible using branches with a wide crotch to prevent any binding of the safety line. The crotch selected for tying, the crotch selected for tying should be directly above the work area or as close to such a position as possible, but located in such a way that a slip or fall would swing the climber away from any electrical conductor. The line shall be passed around the main leader or an upright branch, using the limb as a stop. Feet, hands, and ropes shall be kept out of tight V-shaped crotches. An exception, palms and other trees with similar growth characteristics that will not allow a climbing line to move freely. The climber shall tie a stopper knot, for example, a figure eight knot, in the end of the line, particularly when the climber will be working at heights greater than half the length of the climbing line, to prevent pulling the climbing line accidentally through the climbing hitch and possibly falling. Climbers shall not carry tools in their hands while climbing. Chainsaws and tools shall be raised and lowered one at a time by means of a line except when working from an aerial lift device or during topping or removing operations. Chainsaws used aloft shall be secured against falling. Climbers may attach chainsaws weighing less than 15 pounds to themselves by means of a saw lanyard. Climbing with tree spurs on live trees that are being pruned or otherwise maintained is generally not allowed in accordance with tree care management standards found in ANSI A300. Felling. Prior to felling operations, the employee shall consider the associated hazards that may include, but are not limited to, tree size, for example, able to fit in the landing zone, selected direction of fall, felling path obstacles to avoid or clear, vines or interlocking limbs, species and shape of the tree, the lean of the tree, loose limbs, hangers, broken tops, chunks, or other overhead material, wind force and direction, decay, cavities, or weak spots throughout the tree, location of any electrical conductors or other wires, tree cables, bracing, lightning protection, or other tree hardware, size and terrain characteristics or limitations of the work area, potential for flying debris from tree impact, adequate retreat path, evidence of bees or wildlife habitation in the trees, poisonous plants or water hazards, ability to control access to the work site, authority to remove the tree, quality of wood fiber in the hinge area, root mass stability, ice or snow load, throwback or bounce back potential, potential for spring poles, lodged trees or dead snags in the area, access to tools or resources required for the task, lightning damage, barber chair potential, or foreign objects, nails, wire fence, concrete, etc. in the tree. Prior to felling operations, the work area shall be cleared to permit safe working conditions and an escape route shall be planned. Workers shall ensure that homes and structures are evacuated where trimming and felling operations are in close proximity. Each worker shall be instructed as to exactly what he is to do. All workers not directly involved in the operations shall be kept clear of the work area. 
Before starting to cut, the chainsaw operator shall be sure of his footing and must clear away brush, fallen trees, and other materials that might interfere with cutting operations. A notch and back cut shall be used in felling trees over 5 inches in diameter, measured at breast height. No tree shall be felled by slicing or ripping cuts. If sections of the tree are to be removed, sections shall be limited in length to one-third of the distance to the nearest structure. For example, if the tree is 30 feet from the structure, sections shall be no more than 10 feet long. Just before the tree or limb is ready to fall, an audible warning shall be given to all those in the area. All persons shall be safely out of the range when the tree falls. Brush removal and chipping. Brush and logs shall not be allowed to create a hazard at the work site. Employees working with a brush chipper shall be trained in its safe operations. The chipper shall be operated in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. All workers feeding brush into chippers shall wear eye protection. Loose clothing, gauntlet-type gloves, rings, and watches shall not be worn by workers feeding the chipper. Employees shall never place hands, arms, feet, legs, or other parts of the body on the feed table when the chipper is in operation or the rotor is turning. Push sticks shall be used. Brush chippers shall be fed from the side of the center line and the operator shall immediately turn away from the feed table when the brush is taken into the rotor. Chippers shall be fed from the curbside whenever possible. Pruning and trimming. Pole pruners, pole saws, and similar tools shall be equipped with wood or non-metallic poles. Actuating cords shall be of a non-conducting material. Stump removal. Stump cutters shall be equipped with enclosures or guards that effectively protect the operator. Cabling. No more than two persons shall be in a tree working at opposite ends during cabling installations. Topping and lowering of limbs. Workers performing topping operations shall ensure the trees can stand the strain of a topping procedure. If not, some other means of lowering the branches shall be used. Power saws. The engine shall be started and operated only when all co-workers are clear of the saw and then in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations and instructions. Chainsaw personal protective equipment. Additional PPE for chainsaw use includes chaps, safety boots, and hearing protection. Hearing protection may not be needed on hydraulic saws. Chopping tools. All edge tools and blades shall be properly sheathed when not in use. Wedges and chisels. Only wood, plastic, or soft metal wedges shall be used with power saws. Wood-handled chisels should be protected with a ferrule on the striking end.